Hello, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to another video about Karl Marx. I said another video because I have made quite a few videos about Marx in the past. I talked about him as the founder of communism, his critique of capitalism, and how he became a Marxist philosopher, and how he was different from other philosophers. As a matter of fact. I have made more videos about Karl Marx than any other individual. If you wonder why, it is partly because Marx is an extremely influential philosopher, and partly because I personally have a very high opinion of him as an intellectual. If you are new to this channel, my name is Frank Zhu, and I'm a college professor teaching sociology, history, and philosophy. I'm also an award-winning landscape photographer. Today, I'm going to talk about another one of his most interesting and compelling notions about capitalism, namely alienation. Marx. Used the term to describe a feature of capitalism which he considered as the most destructive of capitalism, and which I will be talking about in just a minute. Nowadays, thanks to Marx, the term alienation has become a popular word to describe a situation or experience of being isolated from a group or an activity to which one should belong or in which. One should be involved, since this is a separation of two things that should be together. The term alienation is also used to refer to feelings of powerlessness and helplessness, not necessarily in relation to Karl Marx or capitalism. But capitalism was what Karl Marx was interested in, and he made an insightful analysis of alienation in capitalist society. In the economic and philosophical manuscripts, which was a series of notes, Marx discusses four aspects of the alienation of labor. One, alienation from the product of labor. Two. Alienation from the activity of labor. Three, alienation from one's own specific humanity, and four, alienation from others and from society. Now, let me briefly explain each of these four aspects. First. In the view of Marx, alienation revealed an inherent evil in the very basis of capitalism. Marx argued that alienation occurred when the worker in a factory setting no longer felt at one with the product of his or her labor. Alienation in a factory takes on the form of the separation of worker and owner. Suppose. I am a worker in a factory under capitalism, unlike in a farm where I, as a farmer, received whatever I produced. What I produce in a factory becomes the possession of another person, and is therefore out of my control. Besides, not only do I lose control over the product I make, I also produce something that is hostile to me. The owner's possession of what I produce gives him power over me. The feeling of alienation here is obvious and strong. It puts me as a worker in a state of powerlessness, frustration, repressed resentment, and despair. Secondly, alienation also means. That while I produce something, I lose control over my life activity. According to Marx, people are happiest 
when they are engaged in meaningful work. For Marx, meaningful work can be work of virtually any kind, so long as the worker has control over its products. As a result of any nation, not only do I lose control over the thing I produce, I also lose control over the activity of producing it. In a factory under capitalism, my activity in producing commodities is not self-expression; it is not meaningful to me. Suppose I am a designer, eager to express myself through some kind of artistic work. You can imagine how much I suffer when my boss controls what brushes, pens, and colors I can use. How much time can be devoted to each project? What is good enough? What happens to the designs, and so on and so forth? No matter what I produce or how much I produce, I will suffer. As a designer, my activity becomes the activity of another person. I'm detached from my work. I'm prevented from exercising my personal judgment and applying my personal standards. This is how I am as an artist, alienated from my own life activity. I only do what I do in order to get a pay. In the view of Marx. Anyone who takes a job solely on the basis of what it pays becomes alienated by reducing him or herself to a money-making machine. As a worker, money and material goods become the most important for me, more important than the experience itself, and more important than the people around me. In a factory, the alienated worker sees his or her boss. Only as the means to a paycheck, not as a full human being with feelings and characters. This is what Marx meant when he said, "The increase in value of the world of things is directly proportional to the decrease in value of the human world." Thirdly, alienation from the product and from the activity of labor leads up to alienation from the self or from the human essence. As a worker, when I feel that my labor is forced to be sold as a commodity, I feel a loss of self, a loss of my life activity. It is to become other than myself. I'm not happy with myself. Not happy. To do what I'm forced to do, and I have lost freedom. I become alienated from who I really am, or at least from who I ought to be. For me, work is seen as something I do, not as an expression of what I am. Most of the things we do, we do in order to make money, or to put ourselves in the preposition to make money, or. To improve our capacities to make money, we don't look at their intrinsic or human value. We only look at them from the perspective of its use. As a result, we are no longer able to see and appreciate the intrinsic qualities of anything, even including ourselves as human beings. Finally, people are alienated from society, because so many of us must work to live. Most of us spend a high percentage of our lives at our jobs. If we are alienated as a worker in a factory, we are surely alienated elsewhere. This is because when I am in a state of alienation, I developed a habit of separating myself from nature and other people. We become alienated from society for another reason. In capitalist society, the traditional community bond is broken. Human beings become essentially either useful or threatening objects to one another. 
According to Marx, we live in a society in which each individual sees every other as a selfish and therefore an enemy. In fact, this world is full of enemies in our eyes. Every other becomes an obstacle to me in my efforts to make money. According to Marx, alienation even extends to our relationship with nature. Nature provides the material basis for all work. Yet, unchecked capitalism uses up nature because the capitalist does not feel part of nature. The alienated worker sees money rather than the natural world that provides bread and milk and fruit and wood as the means of life. Alienated from nature, we cannot see what we really depend on. Well, that is all that I wanted to talk about Marx's theory of alienation in this video. But before I go, I'd like to mention that a recent study in the United States shows that alienation is still relevant and strong nowadays. According to the study, the factors contributing to alienation today are similar to those when Karl Marx was analyzing alienation over 150 years ago. It is no wonder that so many of us find ourselves going to see mental health professionals. Psychotherapy as a business is booming. It is no wonder that we are so interested in our weekends and vacations, in our leisure, because only there do we feel fully free to be ourselves. Most of the week, we sell our bodies and souls out of necessity because the capitalist machine demands that we work. In a word, our possessions with leisure, our absenteeism, our efforts to strike it rich or retire as early as possible only testify to the fact that we are experiencing a high level of alienation at work, regardless if you are a blue-collar or white-collar worker. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.